of journalism wasn't exactly what I felt called to do at that point. And then I turned down the path to falling in love with screenplays and becoming a filmmaker. But I was very fortunate to have some amazing experts as I was, as because this took years to put together and it changed along the way. Initially, we set out to what we thought was, we thought we were making an indie planet Earth. We thought this would have a celebrity narrator that would take you through the story. And it really changed as some of these these roundups occurred, particularly the anarchy, and as we got to know certain forces and their families, the injustice that was happening made us bolder. And so as we got bolder and as we started turning our cameras around and I started having these conversations with BLM officials, it just got more personal. So, And then we went to Texas and to the slaughter pipeline. And so as I sat down to edit, which was right around when we went to Texas, I started writing the voiceover for somebody else. But the more I kept cutting, I realized we had to put in more of that personal footage. I never thought I'd be using iPhone footage and interspersing some of this behind the scenes stuff in there as much as we did. But it changed and it really guided us where it wanted to go. And so, but it very much took, I mean, so many ticking, so, so many ticking of different boxes, even down to trying to figure out what the Couture's did with, with I, I tracked down somebody at the FAA who spoke to me off the record and just trying to figure out certain elements while also being careful and not getting sued. And so a lot went into this, but we had a lot of amazing experts and advisors from Kimberly to Eric and some fantastic groups like the Cloud Foundation, which is a wonderful, wonderful wild horse group that really, um, really helped guide us along the way. You're welcome, thank you. Uh, exactly. I'm glad you're here to respond to 